Now their reproduction usually is sexual. The males are going to be a lot smaller than the females and they have this bent tail that they hold the female by with during copulation. And they have these chitinized spicules that move out of their cloaca and get inserted into the genital pore of the female. And the amoeboid sperm will crawl along that spicule into the female worm. Now the eggs can be embryonated or unembryonated when they go into the female. That means that they could be um, fully developed fertilized eggs or maybe not be fully developed fertilized eggs. Some nematodes uh, undergo what's called endotokia matricida or intrauterine birth that causes maternal death and the juvenile nematodes will actually eat the parent nematode. For defense, uh, we have parasitic nematodes for humans like whipworms, hookworms, ascarids, and pinworms. Um, Trichinella spiralis is a very um, common thing in rats, pigs, and humans, and you get it um, a disease that's called trichinosis, and humans get it by eating undercooked pork most often that has this uh, worm. Belisiscaris infests wild animals, and it can, if we ingest those, we can get it as well. Hemonchus contortus is a real problem for sheep, and it causes a lot of economic damage for sheep farms. And there are endo entomopathogenic nematodes that parasitize insects. And of course, we think they're all that because we like anything that gets rid of insects. Now, the thing about nematodes is they can suspend their life processes completely if they're in unfavorable conditions. So that means they can survive extreme drying, heat, or cold, and then when things get better, they will return to life. This is called cryptobiosis. Most of them are microscopic, um, and that means that we don't have many as fossils. On the other hand, uh, there's one that parasitizes a sperm whale, and it can reach 13 meters in length.